Hey family, it's Tasha Mom by Prepping. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. You already know what time it is. Get your drink, pull up. Let's get a sip. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so today I want to talk about safety. You know, there is a, a concerning amount of, uh, of violence happening. Now, violence has been here since the end of the time. Violence has increased um, quite a bit in, in certain areas of the country. It's always been a thing. Um, and we don't give a whole lot of attention to it. We definitely give it some news. We give it a spotlight real quick and then we move on to the next thing. And, and what that does is it just numbs a lot of people to what's going on. And what I don't want to do is you to be numb. You to not be ready right now is when you absolutely need to have your head on a swivel because there's a lot of personal attacks, one-on-one -on -one attacks, random attacks at that, right? Strangers, people that don't even know people walking down the street, minding their own business, and getting clobbered to death by hammers. Now, I get it, a lot of this stuff is in the cities. People are like, well, that's New York City you're talking about. Well, guess what? A lot of people live in New York City and they need to prepare just like you and I, right? Um, you know, that's where the subways are. That's where the, this is. You need to not be thinking about that so much because that's how you get complacent and then you're not ready for something that could happen in your own area, your own town to you when you're out just merely getting gas or going to get groceries. There's a lot of um, domestic violence uptick, right? Um, anytime you have stress, anxiety brought into a picture and there's that pressure, you're, you're going to see cracks in different relationships and different things. That puts a lot of pressure on a family, on a relationship, right? On people in general. And so there's an uptick and you're seeing a lot of domestic violence or significant others, partners that are ending up in murder, right? And so we've always seen that, but we're seeing an, um, an increase. Another thing that I'm seeing a lot of that's super disturbing to me, that's super sad, uh, and I can only attribute this to the stress and people losing jobs, losing homes, losing cars, um, worried and the stress, financial stress of letting their families down. But there's a lot of murder-suicide family, right? Um, where you have one or the other, mother or father, killing the entire family and tons of kids and then obviously doing you know turning the, the weapon on themselves and so there's a lot there's a pattern of, of a lot of that an uptick of more of that happening and that is sad and it's happening everywhere beautiful families are just cannot handle it and uh, have hit their limit and feel like they have no other option but to do that and that's heartbreaking that's that's heartbreaking okay um, so how do you, how do you prepare? Why are we even talking about this? Well, we're talking about this because times are getting more dangerous. I don't want you to get complacent. Your, you know, channels like me, you know, we're telling you, Hey, prepare, get ready, do this, do that. And a lot of that has to do with you being out and about you being out and about and doing the things, getting the project pieces, going to Home Depot, getting gas, just all the everyday stuff you're doing with the kids, maybe projects, school, events sporting events right um just regular life stuff grocery shopping trying to do hauls trying to you know find sales there's all these things you're trying to do to get ready and it puts you in vulnerable places it puts you out in the public right now maybe hey there's not a lot of extra money so maybe you're not going to as many um you know concerts and 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 going to see music night at the local bar and maybe you're not going out to a restaurant and you're not eating out as much and you're not you're not going to those places right where people think like mass shootings happen um but there's a lot of places that different things can happen whether it's a mass shooter or whether it's just a crazy person that's um literally just having a mental episode and is going through something and has never been taken care of and, and just has a moment um maybe it's somebody that just snaps because they cannot handle what life is throwing at them right now um and so how do you protect yourself i think there's some misconceptions too that people think um and get complacent because they think that if it's daylight you're safe and that's not always the case i said this a few uh, months ago there was a day here where it was daylight here. This is a small town and, and somebody was going around to all these different stores and the parking lots and robbing people. Some of them at gunpoint, some of them at not, right? And so it's just alarming because daylight is not just, oh, well, it's it's daytime. It's totally safe as long as I do everything during daytime. And when there's a lot of people around, I'm okay. Because if there's a lot of people around, crime doesn't happen. No. Crime is happening in front of groups of people. You have a lot of society who would never step in, never say a word, never try to stop anything. 
not even pull out their phone or worse, pull out their phone and watch it and record it, but not do anything. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of crime that happens in daylight and with lots of witnesses, lots of people. Yes. Are there people that will step in and help? Sure there are, but you have a lot of people that do not want to, whether it's fear or whether it's, they just, they're just so, um, numb to minding their own business. Right. And so, you know, what do you do? How do you arm yourself um, to be ready in case something ha happens your way? I'm going to go over a few things that I do. Um, small hauls and I do cash. So a lot of people argue the fact of, well, cash isn't smart. Cash isn't smart. People see that cash, you're flashing cash. You're giving, but if you're doing a small haul, you're not flashing a lot of cash anyway. Don't pull out a wad of cash to pay $40 out and you have this big wad and you put back. I'm saying you have some bills, you have the amount ready to go that you know you're going to approximately spend and you have that and you pay in cash and you do small hauls. I don't care if you have to go to, to different stores in order to get maybe the bigger haul that you have in your mind that you want to get. Maybe you've budgeted, you want to do that, do that, but go to your different stores. Just hit the sales and hit several stores and do smaller hauls because people out here, baby, are bold. These, these register people are bold. They just be asking. It's not even necessarily the people standing behind you like, oh, what are you doing? It's the cashiers. Oh, what is this? I bought like the other day two things of turmeric. Just little plastic, smaller than what you would get even like some blueberries or strawberries in. Probably a fourth of that size. And it was turmeric. It was organic. There's only one place I found in town where I can get this organic turmeric. And so I got that. I got two of them. Two of them. They're maybe this tall, this much not that much at all you guys and that register had the nerve to ask me like oh well what are you doing with all this turmeric what are you doing with this right and i was like well first of all how dare you but i'm like i don't know i'm cooking with it it's food like i because I, I just didn't feel like going into all the ways i was planning to use it i was planning to bury some of it right to grow some of it and then i was planning to take some and use it in my fire ciders and things like that right i just didn't appreciate that same thing going to a bulk restaurant place got some rice we get rice there all the time i get rice and this big old fat cashier's like what are you doing with all this rice i'm like i don't know i donate it i donate it to people who need it oh oh you know what i'm saying like you, you got to be ready because they're very bold they're very like like they're they're just like people they're noticing and they're seeing it. And if they think it's even a little bit more than what your share is or what you're supposed to have, they're going to say something. And so the smaller, the better. Keep people out of your business and just keep it pushing. Um, next thing I have is parking. So obviously parking as close to the, the parking um, lot as possible or to the parking lot as close to the front as possible. Um, some places have security guards that could mean the difference, but again, people are bold and I always make sure that I try to get as close as possible. Obviously everybody tries to do that, not even for security, but just to be closer and they don't have to walk as far. Um, but sometimes I, I like doing a little bit farther away. Okay. Um, where there's less cars around me, it's less people to identify as I'm walking into the store in and out of the store. I'm constantly, the minute I get, um, drive up, I've already scanned my surroundings, people around me, anybody that's in their cars, getting out of their cars, walking into the store, walking out of the store. I've already scanned that. That's just part of my military security. I just want to know what's happening around me. I've already done that. Right. Um, but I like having less cars, the less cars around me, the, the less I have to do, less I have to scan, less all of that. I also like to ensure that I'm close to where the carts go back to um, because there's no point in parking in a certain place that you feel safer, but then you have to go all the way across the thing to take the cart back. Again, it's not a lazy thing. It's a proximity thing of being far from your car. And so if I can get close to one of those where I, I offload, I shut the the trunk and then I go put it away. So some things like locking is a big deal for me. Um, you know, I pull in, I get out, lock the door like a normal person, go into the store, come out with my groceries, unlock when I'm close to the car, open it up, put the groceries in, immediately close it, lock it, take my cart back wherever I'm going to go, unlock it, get in the car, immediately lock it. 
So like I'm never playing around with any kind of possibilities for somebody to try to hop into my car. And mind you, before all of that, I'm still scanning to make sure there's nobody trying to walk up on me and catch me as I'm trying to get into the car. Now, I understand not everybody's like that, but if you employ even a couple of these things, it's a huge, it's a huge deal, okay? Same thing with getting gas and locks. I get out of the gas thing, I lock my car, I go, I swipe my card, I get my gas going, get it started, and then I get back in my car and I wait. I don't know how many videos and how many things I've seen of reports of people, people walk right up to people as people are just waiting for their gas. They're just sitting there waiting for their gas, waiting for their gas, and people are just coming up and doing crazy stuff to them. Whether they know them or not, whether they're coming up to rob them, ask them for money, or just crazy people coming up trying to hit people with hammers or beat people up. There's so much stuff on the internet to show you that like this stuff's happening. And so I get my gas ready and then I, I sit in the car, right, with the locked doors. And a lot of people might be like, well, it's such a paranoid life, but it really isn't. It's really just conditioning. I'm used to doing it and it's not that I'm paranoid and I'm like, I better make sure I lock the door. Somebody's going to get me. It's not that at all. It's, it's the fact that we have to keep your head on a swivel and be paying attention and so if you want to take this video and be like this is too much she's she's super paranoid uh, i'm not gonna live paranoid well fine baby do that that's that's your thing all i'm doing is giving you a couple things that we do to stay safe nobody is going to be some kind of soft target over here if you're getting through you're 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 fighting to get through right you're not going to easily do anything um to anybody in my family to me and to my family i'm not going to make it easy for you um, I already said parking, already said locks. Next thing I have is alarm. You need some sort of instant alarm. That could be any kind of thing. That could be just you walk out of the store and you have your, your keys out so you can easily hit your car alarm. Okay. Maybe it's another type of alarm. That's just a key alarm that is just, you're able to, it just makes a loud noise. When somebody comes near you, you just make a loud noise and, um, and it scares them and it alerts everybody around to look, Hey, something's happening to me. Um, basic, 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 basic stuff. I'm not going to tell you what to get. There's all, there's a ton of stuff on the market, but you want to have some kind of instant, um, alarm. I mean, obviously you can yell, you can scream, but a lot of people in fear when something's happening to them, they, uh, they go into shock and they can't scream. They can't yell. Okay. Next thing I have is quick defense. So, you know, you're, 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 maybe it's a little bit of mace on the keychain or around your neck. Maybe it's, um, you, when you go grocery shopping, you wear these two big rings that have big spikes on them. And it's just an extra thing that you have something extra to, to help you with. Um, it, uh, there's, there's a thousand things that you can do, but you need, this is more than your everyday we um, weapon or protection. Like people are like, well, I have that and I'm fine. And that's good. That's great. But I'm almost talking about that quick release, that quick something that can catch them off guard quickly so that you can break free. OK, so that you can even get to the point possibly of getting to that, because maybe you're overtaken so fast that you now you can't even get to that. So you need just something, a reaction, a uh, quick uh, attack type piece of something on you piece of jewelry some a lot of people carry stuff on their keychains and have sharp things different things just to to catch people off guard so that you can break free to then get what you really want to get right another tip that i like is either um no purse no purse at all no wallet that you're carrying nothing you just take the cash you need take the ids that you need put them in your pocket um, and that's it, or your coat, your jacket, whatever, and you're not taking a purse at all. If you are going to take a purse, it's across the chest, all the way over your body type purse. It's a smaller purse, doesn't have much in it at all. Um, but that could be easier because that could be, um, obviously it's harder to pull off you, but then it gives you the capability to have some other um, army type defensive tools in that. So you, obviously you can keep your, your money and your cards and your phone, whatever, but you could also put um, a piece in there, right? A piece of uh, defensive tool in there, okay? Whether that's a knife or whatever it is, okay? Um, and then the last thing I have is cut down on door services. So, you know, we talk about this all the time, security, secrecy, gray man, not letting people see your neighbors, see everything, you know, um, everything can be delivered to your door, everything. And so food, Amazon, uh, even gross, uh, even um, food, food like Uber Eats and stuff. Um, one, it puts a bullseye, and just the knowledge, 
right? They could care less that you get your groceries delivered, baby. But the minute that something happens and their family doesn't have food, trust and believe they're gonna remember that family right there gets food delivered all the time. I know that they get del food delivered every single week, groceries, or they get groceries every two weeks. They just got groceries. They're gonna know because they're used to that pattern. They're used to seeing you get stuff, okay? So you have to fall back on that 100%. You gotta stop that completely and, and start reversing that in their head. They still might be like, well, back in the day, they used to get groceries, but they're also gonna know, oh, I, I haven't seen them get groceries for a long time. They're not, you know, they're not doing that, right? Even if somebody is like, oh, they get Uber Eats all the time, they're eating out. Well, maybe their first thought is not like, oh, they have food, right? But maybe the thought is, well, they have money though. If they in today's society can afford to get, you know, Uber Eats three times a day, two times a day, once a day, they, they, they have money. Or maybe they have items of value because they look like they have, they appear like they got that extra money. It's inflation right now. Bad things are happening. People cannot afford stuff. And if you have somebody that they can see is eating out like that every single day, that's a sign of wealth uh, to a lot of people, okay? I'm not talking about Bill Gates wealth, but I'm just talking about just wealth in general. Like if you're able to just eat out all the time, that is not cheap, okay? And so that could be viewed as something or that you have something possibly of value. Amazon, same thing. If you're getting box after box after box every single day, that is a sign of wealth, that you have money um, and you're you're spending it. And, and then what is it that you're buying, all the stuff you're buying, you know? Is it something that could be of value that I could use for me and my family who's starving? Or, or is it kitty cat antiques, right? It's statues of kitty cats, who knows? But the mind doesn't know. And if there's crisis, the mind is gonna think, I wonder what they were always getting delivered, right? Or maybe they have money, or maybe they have something of value. You know, I don't know, but now I need to investigate it because I just don't know, right? Um, there's a ton of stuff you can do. I've done these videos before of different safety things. I know in the comments, people are gonna say a lot of things that you can do. So please do that. Please let the group know different security things, different things that you do throughout the day or when you're going out to these places, when you're going out to um, you know, get gas or whatever, like what is it? Me, recently, my ring, right? Got a ring upgrade this last year. Never had a ring like this. Um, hubby got a, me a ring upgrade. But I'll be honest, there has been times where lately I've been like, maybe I should take it off when I go out and go grocery shopping, okay? Because it's just perception. Now, there's a ton of ladies walking around with rings, but it's 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 no different than not going out with a bunch of jewelry and your nice clothes and you look like you have some money. It's perception, right? I'm just telling you right now, I look like a bum. I never change. Like what you see right here is what you get 24 seven with me. I'm wearing sweatpants probably 95% of the time. The other 5% is jeans. You know, I'm wearing t-shirts, sweatshirts, a lot of just, you know, jackets, coverall, just pullover, flannel. I'm not wearing nothing. I I go everywhere in my, in my um, farm boots, you know. Uh, this girl is does not look fancy. I do not look like I have money at all. But this, to somebody, could look like, oh, maybe she does have something, right? She's got that rock on there, right? So, listen, you got to think outside the box and just keep your head on a swivel is all I'm saying right now. Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to your local news and what's happening with crime in your local areas. And do not be complacent and just think, well, I'm safe. I live in a gated community, I'm safe. Or a crime hasn't happened here for 50 years, so I don't have to be concerned. Uh, you have to be concerned because as we move forward, things are gonna get more desperate for more people. And they're gonna branch out and they're gonna get smarter about where they can get things, who they can get it from and you have to be careful, and they're gonna be bolder. The, what we're seeing now is nothing compared to what we'll see in the future. And so you have to just be ready ready for that, right? You gotta be ready for, um, there's evil people out there. There is people out there, criminals, that do not um, mean you any you know, goodwill. They are ready to harm you, hurt you, will not think another second of it, um, you know, they're just bad, very, very bad people. And so 
get yourself ready. This goes for your home, getting your ready, your home ready for security and fortification, two different things. Um, this is getting things and um, thinking about all aspects. We have chickens, making sure they're locked up, not just locked up from predators and making sure that the, the, the coop is predator proof. But I'm talking about predators like this kind of predator, a person that's starving. It's just like the garden. And what do you try to do to, to hide that landscape, right? Of somebody trying to come in later who's desperate and, and harvesting your whole garden. And, and, oh, there's a chicken coop too. Let me grab some chickens or let me grab some eggs. Forget the eggs. They'd be trying to take the chickens, right? So th that stuff matters. Do you have locks ready to go so that the day gets crazy and you need to start locking stuff up like that? locking extra gates, extra bolts to put on the gates, your fortification stuff, your your actual everyday security, just surveillance and being able to see outside your home and your lighting and stuff like that. Think about that stuff, okay? Um, this is not to be paranoid. This is not to be scared, but this is to be smart. You should check your windows and doors at night before you go to bed and make sure that they're all shut and they're locked. That's like a common sense thing. That's not a paranoia thing. That's a, I'm not going to be a soft target because a lot of criminals, what they do is they walk around thieves, burglars, and they're looking for soft targets. They're looking for that easy in and out, right? Um, they're looking for the, 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 the least amount of resistance from both the person and the house or whatever that they're trying to get into and get through, right? So if you're leaving a window open and, and somebody's going through, walking through the neighborhood, looking for stuff, that house with the open window looks way more enticing than this house that I see that's lit up. I've checked a couple windows. There, there's nothing. Maybe they're not even checking stuff. They're just perusing and looking, right? Uh, you have folks that just check the doors for cars, right? They just walk through neighborhoods. They don't care if them lights come on. They don't care if they're being videoed because they know there's a good chance you're asleep and it doesn't matter. You're not, that light coming on is not alerting you. Nothing's happening. And they're gonna just go ahead and check the, do the doors because they know if they can get in, they can get in quick, two minutes, take a look at what's in there. Is there anything they can grab? And then they keep pushing. And they'll just run through. So don't be a soft target. Lock your car doors, lock your house doors, lock your windows, shut them at night. Um, don't be a soft target is my point. And that goes for when you're walking around, you know, don't be uh, paying it, you know, you're in your phone, not paying attention to your surroundings, right? You're walking into a store, you're walking through the store. Sometimes people are being cased in the store. Somebody's watching them and they don't even know because they're in the phone the whole time, right? Or you're walking around somewhere, you're shopping, let's say in the mall or wherever, and you're in the phone and you're not paying attention to your surroundings, right? Um, so you've got to be paying attention to what's going on around you so that you're ready and you you maybe have those couple seconds of seeing something actually physically coming your way to do you harm, okay? So I hope this is helpful for those of you that learned something, got something from this, from everybody else. Please leave your tips, tricks, things that you've learned to do, things you like to do for you and your safety, your everyday safety. Put those in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, bye.